Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise God be to God on this 12th day of July 2020. The Lord has been good to those who love Jerusalem. And so we pray that God will continue to bless and keep us and protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger. We thank the Lord for all that he does and continues to uh, continue to call on his holy and righteous name to be a blessing to all of his children uh, wherever they may be. Uh, we want to lift up the name of Jesus today. We ask that you would go with us as we go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for another week, Lord. We thank you that you have brought us through another week of this pandemic, Lord. We ask now that you Touch your children in a special way. Reassure them of their worth in your eyes, Lord. Strengthen us for the, for the days ahead. And God, give us patience as we deal with this pandemic. Well, Father, we pray for our sister churches all over the world. We pray for our missionaries, Lord, or wherever they may be stationed. God, we pray uh, for those who are behind prison walls, those who are homeless, those who are suffering, Oh God, those who are lonely, oh Father, we ask that you would just have your way and, and give us uh, the ability to be satisfied in your satisfaction. And we'd be so sure to give you all praise, honor, and glory. Special prayer request, Lord, for those at the Bethel Missionary Baptist Church of Pocatello, Idaho. Oh God, we ask that you would just be with each one of them, our members, oh Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And God, we'll be so sure to give you all praise, lifting your name above every name. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess, no matter what the world says, no, word, no matter how the world attempts to, to discount you, Lord, and the power of your spirit. But God, we pray that you will just continue to have your way. This is our prayer today in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen and amen.
Officers and members of the Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, I want to say, let us not forget our responsibilities with tithes and offerings. Amen. You know who to contact to get those that, that information in, get in touch with Sister Van or Sister Robertson, and they will give you instruction on what to do to get whatever offerings you want to get to them. Amen. Uh, today, we want to talk to you from the thought what have you done? What have you done? The text is from Genesis, the fourth chapter, the 10th and the 11th verses, which says, then the Lord said, what have we done? What have you done? You killed your brother and the ground opened up to take his blood from your hands. Now his blood is shouting to me from the ground. So you will be cursed from this very ground. Genesis 10, 11, uh, Genesis 4, 10 and 11. This question requires some pondering for us in our day and time. What have you done? To our brother of a different hue, what have we done? When we feel no compassion for the other, the question again rises, what have we done? The words of our text contains a pointed and painful question to a man who was guilty of great sin. Cain had just killed his brother and hid his body in the field. Not realizing that God sits high and looks low and there is nothing hidden from him. These words indicate that God holds us responsible for our actions. And the price is far more than we wish to pay. From the beginning to the present, God, who doesn't change and is still holding us responsible for our actions. The question, what have you done, is very personal. This question is not directed at family or friends or our particular crews or our entourages, not even to our government or our voted in leaders. This is a bullseye question directed specifically to each of us, to you and to me. It is very personal. It concentrates solely on the wrongdoer. The question, what have you done, is very present. The question is not what are you willing to do or what do you hope to do in the future or what do you wish to do? The question is, what have you done? An immediate past tense inquiry. Many people make the tragic mistake of living either in the past or in the future and fail to live in the present. 
we we need to ask ourselves what are or what am I doing right now for God and for my fellow man? What have you done? Is a very proper question. God as creator, sustainer, and redeemer has the right to come and ask such a question. What have you done? What have you done in relation to your fellow man? What have you done in relation to your voting for moral leadership? What have you done in preserving Mother Earth? What have you done in being a good mentor for our youth? What have you done in being an advocate for the injustices in our society? What have you done towards being your brother's keeper? What have you done with Jesus Christ, God's son, in relation to your life? What have you done with God's gift, the Holy Spirit, that has been given to every believer? What have you done with God's word that he gave to us to know him better and understand his will for our lives? What have we done with God's extended hand to us? Uh, have we grasped it or did we just slap it away? What have we done to grow our faith? What have we done with the church to which our Lord gave the commission to carry to the ends of the earth the good news of God's love? What have we done for and with the unsaved folk around us? What have we done for our elders? What have we done for the homeless, the fatherless, the widow? This question can be proper for each of us, for it can help us realize our stewardship responsibilities, visualize the tremendous opportunities before us, and assist us in facing up to the fact that time is passing swiftly. And so my brothers and sisters, in closing, prayer is a dialogue in which we talk to as well as listen to God. Maybe this is the reason why we do not engage in prayer more often than we do. Perhaps our performance has been so poor that we find prayer to be a painful experience when God comes to us with the question, what have we done? Let's respond to the gracious ministry of the Holy Spirit, who is seeking to lead us in the life of faith and faithfulness so that prayer will not be a painful experience. God desires that prayer be a pleasurable and productive experience for all believers. Even when Jesus was facing Calvary, the soothing nature of prayer with his father in Gethsemane gave him the added confidence to advance to the inevitable. Prayer with the Father will and does soothe us and give us the confidence we will need in our time of trouble as well. I want to say God bless you for another week and God keep you as our prayer in the precious name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior that we can ask ourselves, what have I done? God bless you.